good evening everyone and welcome to this transformational venture today's topic is commercialization of innovation new market offerings and tapping into global markets the learning objectives are to understand new product development to understand the challenges in new product development to understand how to manage the development process to understand the consumer adoption model to decide whether to go abroad to spread your business which market to enter and how to enter after attending this session you shall be able to understand the process of commercialization of innovation new market offerings and entering the global markets there is a suggested reading for you which is pertinent to this topic we should start with the challenges in new product introduction the challenges are basically three folded the first is the innovation imperatives in any economy <clears throat> the rapid changes in technology and continuous innovation is changing the shape of the industry few companies will find which are highly innovative few companies will find who are traditional who are following the traditional method traditional technology the highly innovative companies are able to identify and quickly seize the new market opportunities such type of companies create a positive attitude towards innovation and risk taking also routinizing the innovation process practice teamwork and allow the people to experiment and even fail so innovation is an important part of this challenge now the challenges of new product success as we have experienced that more established companies focus on the incremental innovation whereas the newer companies the startups create disruptive technology which are cheaper and more likely to alter the competitive space there are few other types which i will discuss later on. so this was the second part of my challenge also we should focus on the new product failures the failures will actually teach you how to succeed in future in the process of innovation in the process of commercialization of your innovation there are 
many setbacks in actual when you will you will go for uh, you will go for new product development and commercialization of new product i would like to mention a few uh, starting from shortage of important ideas in certain areas there may be few ways left to improve some basic products like detergent or steel but companies are trying to add enzymes in detergent so that becomes to some extent a biotech product the second aspect of this a new product failure is fragmented markets the companies must aim their new products at a smaller market segment at the initial stage which can mean lower sales and profits for each product so that every business has its own economy and unless you achieve that economy it it becomes vulnerable when you are operating in a very small segment of market with your new product as 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 testing you no know, phase it becomes more vulnerable for your uh, testing and your new product introduction in such new markets there are various social economic and governmental constants there are environmental issues too they must also be resilient of economic times if the economic times are tough like the present situation in 2020 is a very tough time for all businesses if any one of you wants to introduce your uh, product this time then you must be very careful the next aspect is the cost of development since any development involves high research and development manufacturing and marketing cost so how to bear that cost and whether uh, it's worth it to bear that cost so these issues should come into the surface the next aspect that i want to mention is capital shortage as i mentioned many times that small organizations and startups and uh, msmes became vulnerable in past because of capital shortage you may have good ideas with you but if it cannot raise funds then it becomes economically unviable the next point that i want to mention is shortage of required development time in most of the cases the small organization don't have time to invest in product development to understand the market to understand the level of competition everything they make hurry in introducing the product and which makes it vulnerable you should keep in mind that you are dealing with some new technology 
if 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 you are uh, working in a new field there may be some strategic partnership and you are testing your all the concept which require a advanced level of strategy business strategy as, as well as marketing strategy next is poor launching time new products are sometimes launched after the category has already taken off or when there are still insufficient interest you may be nurturing your idea for a long time say for 3 years or 5 years and now the stage has come to introduce that product in the market but you have to be very careful you have to observe you have to know whether <coughs> sorry the market is ready to accept it whether your idea is still new and alive in the market or not or if already there is a new competitor in the market with same kind of concept or not <clears throat> so launching time is very important <clears throat> next is the next is the shorter product life cycle everything has a project life cycle which starts from early stage goes to the peak which is the saturation point and declines since you are working in a very vulnerable scenario you should plan how to make your product life cycle shorter one and the last point of this new product failure is the organization support the most problem that <clears throat> most uh, startup firms face that the founders has to work alone there is no proper organization structure there is no proper uh, manning there is no proper organizational support system because of lack of money lack of you know, uh, capital and uh, the uncertainty in the entire project but when you are introducing a new product then you should be ready with the competition and your competitors are very powerful they can kick you off at any point of time because they are the market leaders so at the early stage you should plan how he will sustain in the market at least for some time to show your presence so these are the new product failures from where we learn a lot <clears throat> these points i have these points i have already uh, shared i have uh, in my earlier sessions <clears throat> i always emphasize for cvp business model that is customer value proposition business model where you target your customer you set what jobs to be done to solve any particular problem of your customer or the segment that you have selected and the offering 
how your product or service is going to fulfill the need of your target segment. So that makes a comprehensive work for this customer value proposition. There are three different aspects which is interlinked with this customer value proposition model. It starts from profit equation because you have to, the purpose of the business is, the primary focus is to earn profit. So there should be a strong revenue model. There should be a competitive cost structure. There should be a good margin model and the resources velocity. The key resources include people, technology itself, the resources, the equipment, information, channels, partnership, alliances, everything and the brand. Also, you should focus on the key process in designing the product and uh, so that so that it attracts the market. So this is the serial business model and the process of your business starts to make this civil business model more and more strong, stronger, so that it becomes competitive in the market. It makes you competitive in the market. Next, you have to, when you, when you go for implementing the CVV business model, in reality, you should think of solving these five questions. Question number one is how to explore market opportunities and to create customer value. How to choose value in a competitive dynamics, crafting your brand positioning and creating brand equity. The third question is how to design value by setting product and pricing strategy. Fourth question is how to deliver value by designing an integrated marketing channel. And the fifth question is how to communicate the value. So these are the five basic questions that you have to solve to implement your CVV based business model in practice. I discussed it many times <clears throat> that when you will go for any kind of technology innovation, you should align it with the market condition based on whether it is a new market or whether it is an existing market, whether it is a new technology or an existing technology. In my earlier slide, I was discussing that new companies always go for the disruptive innovation where the technology is new, but there is an existing market, which is very easy for them to penetrate. Whereas the uh, existing companies prefer to go for incremental innovation or architectural innovation. The difference between incremental innovation and architectural innovation is that in the incremental innovation, it's the technology is existing, the market is also existing, you are giving some kind of value, adding some kind of value to your existing technology to sustain in the market. 
and almost all major companies for their all major brands follow this incremental innovation small small development small small value adding uh, to their product to sustain to to capture that market to to sustain in the market and in the architectural innovation companies prefer to replicate their existing technology and what they have learned from the existing market in new market so it's a kind of replication replicative model in the new market so this three is very clear the disruptive technology disruptive innovation where both the technology uh, where the technology is uh, new you are in, you are innovating something very new and you are introducing it in the existing market where the market is ready market is ready to accept your product but this radical innovation if you if you can if you can really do something in this radical innovation that makes the uh, a change <clears throat> now the mobile phone changed everything so introduction of mobile phone itself is radical innovation but iphone is the example of disruptive innovation where the market uh, the market for uh, <clears throat> mobile phone was already there but they introduced new technology which was a disruptive technology in the existing mobile market so when you will go for marketing your innovative ideas you should link your innovation with the market condition also i discussed it when i discussed a uh, strategy formulation of strategy there are different markets based on their size and the level of competition you can divide those market in high medium low grades where the competition is nil and the demand is high or you can create the demand that situation is the blue ocean and if any such company any such startup can operate in the blue ocean it's very safe for you because there is no competition and you can easily ignore the competition so and where the competition level is very high but the demand is low or medium you should never try to penetrate on in on, in those markets so assess the market size assess the level of competition before you penetrate i also discussed the porters five forces you should know the threat of entry the bargaining power of both supplier on the one side buyer on the other side threat of the substitutes and the industry rivalry all this is a basic thing that you should know you should learn you should prepare yourself before going before jumping into the market many top companies in the world use these stage gate system to divide the innovation process into different stages also with a gate or a checkpoint 
at the end of each. Now, look at this chart. The first step is idea generation. Now, the question is, is the idea worth considering? If your answer is yes, then you go for idea screening. But if you see that if your idea is not, doesn't have any worth, then drop it. In the second st stage, <clears throat> the idea at idea screening, the question comes, is the product idea compatible with company's objectives, its strengths and resources? Do you have those resources with you? If no, drop it. If yes, go for the next level, which is concept development and testing. You have some idea, but before commercializing it, you should, you should go for testing. Now the question comes, can we find a good concept consumers say they would try? If no, drop it. If yes, go for the next level, which is marketing strategy development. The question is, can we find a cost-effective, affordable marketing strategy? which is the key in present situation. If it is no, drop it. If it is yes, go for the next level. Business analysis. This business analysis we have already learned. I am not going into details, but the question comes, will this product meet our profit goals? If it is no, then drop it. If it is yes, then go for the Next stage, sixth stage, product development. Have you got a technically and commercially sound product? If the answer is no, drop it. If the answer is yes, go for the seventh stage, market testing. Question comes, have product sales met the expectations? If the answer is no, send the idea back for product development. And after that, if the answer is no, drop it. Otherwise, go for commercialization, which is the last step. Here also you will have to face a very critical question. Are product sales meeting the expectations? If no, modify the plan or the marketing program. If it is yes, then make your future plans. So this is actually a good framework of your decision process. Every stage has exit gate. Every stage. So before putting money into it, at every stage, we have to assess. You have to assess your project and you have to take a decision. So it's very important thing. And from this discussion, it is clear that uh, it may be, it may be beyond the knowledge, beyond the expertise of, uh, of a, a startup firm 
of an entrepreneur. So, in each and every stage, you need the support of professional, you need the support of a mentor to make it viable. So, the process, this decision making process starts from an idea generation. Now, searching for idea itself is a big job. Uh, some marketing experts believe the greatest opportunity is and highest leverage with new products are found by uncovering the best possible set of unmet customer needs or the technological innovation. So this new product ideas can come from interacting with various groups and using creativity generating technique. In many cases, we can we can develop in many cases we can develop a deep framework. What is the deep framework? Deep framework is demand first innovation and growth. So the focus is on the demand, not what is coming in your mind first. So you are starting, your starting point is from assessing the demand in the market. It has three distinct parts. One is demand landscape. Use observational, anthropological, ethnographic methods or consumer self reports to map customers' needs, wants, and even beyond. The second part is the opportunity space. Here you may use conceptual lanes and structured innovative thinking tools to achieve your market perspectives from different angles. And the third part is the strategic blueprint. Think about how the new product can fit into customers' lives and how it can be distinguished from the competitors. The strategic points, the strategic analysis we have already done, so I am not going into the details. But here I would like to mention that Intel is the classic example <clears throat> who tried to commercialize their innovation in a very highly competitive market with, uh, with the fertile opportunity of microprocessor. So market was there. They brought the disruption in the market with more fertile opportunities with their microprocessors and they made it. So, apply this deep framework. You start from the demand. You enter where the demand is very high. You, you, you forget that there is competition. If the demand is very high, the market size is also very high. So go for that. 
I would like to suggest you to follow is 10 ways to find great new ideas which has two different aspects. One is depend on yourself and the team. The, it may be a small team, but with the team members. And the second aspect is you rely upon the customers. You rely upon the consumers in the market and you rely upon their feedbacks. You run some informal sessions with various groups of customers and your, your uh, team members. It's a kind of brainstorming and that will give you some good ideas. You make a small survey to understand their likings and dislikings and to know about your competitor's product. You undertake flying on the wall or camping out research with customers. It was done by HP Hewlett Packard. You use iterative rounds with your group of customers in one room and your technical people, if you have any technical people with you, in the another room and try to take their uh, views, customers' views, and give it to your technical team to solve. You set up a keyword search that can routinely scan the trade publications in multiple countries for new product achievements. So that is also a very good thing. When any academician go for a new research, they actually do the same thing. They first, with the keywords, make a search in the Google, what work has been already done previously, and what the works has been published in different journals to have some idea that what is the position in the market. So it, 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 it gives as is analysis. You take part in trade shows to understand what kind of new products are coming in the market and how they are superior or inferior from your own ideas. If you have your technical marketing team with you, make a visit to your supplier's lab to understand what new you can do. So, Everything, the, all the efforts can build a vault for your ideas. And you should generate not only one wide idea, you should work with multiple ideas because you do not know which idea will actually click in the market. So you should go for multiple choices as many as choices you will have, that will give you some advantages uh, in your future course of action. Now the question comes, how to screen my idea? And in many cases, I in my earlier slide, uh, last to last slide, I, I, when I described the uh, eight step process, Yes, no. If it is no, then drop. And it's not to, uh, it's it's not easy to take a decision like drop. And in many cases, drop 
error occurs. Many good ideas are dropped because of lack of experience. So you should be very much cautious that there is no drop error when you are judging your project or your your uh, your concept. So, on the one hand, the purpose of screening is to drop the poor ideas as far as practicable and as early as possible. On the other hand, you should understand that no good idea should be dropped unless or until you are very much sanguine on it. There are various aspects which actually acts as driving forces like the level of competition, uh, the target uh, market and segment, price, market size, development time and cost, manufacturing cost, manufacturing process, rate of return, cost of capital, so many of things are there. Now the question is, how do you assess it? How do you assess <coughs> your future success? Here is a simple formula you have to apply probability model to assess it. You have to assess the overall probability of success by multiplying probability of technical completion, probability of commercialization given the technical completion, and probability of economic success given the commercialization. So there are three distinct parts again. One is the technical completion. Other is the commercialization, given the technical completion, and the third part is economic success of your project, given the commercialization. So, before dropping your project, you should calculate <coughs> the overall probability of your success, then only you take your decision. And also, on the other side, on the other hand, before going for a project, you should assess the probability of success because you cannot afford to lose your money, your energy, your time, your everything that you are nurturing for so many of days, so many of months, so many of years in you to make something viable becomes unviable. So, these are the important aspects that I like to suggest you to follow. Here a small thing I would request you. Take a decision whether to make the product or to buy or to outsource. So on one hand, you can produce your product by taking the risk and challenges of manufacturing process. And on the other side, you can outsource and take it done from any of your vendors. But taking any decision on this is not very simple because there are various, no, economic and uh, non-economic factors that uh, has great influence on such decisions. If your technology is very um, critical and if the vendor is not good enough to uh, uh, produce that, then you may, you may not uh, depend him, depend on him. Uh, for outsourcing, there may be risk of uh, duplicating 
uh, risk of imitating your product or the concept if you outsource because there is a less confidentiality factor. So all such things you have to keep it to your mind before you decide whether he will produce it or he will outsource it. Next comes, it's very important, product and brand positioning. There may be various alternative ideas and you should generate more than one idea. And you will have ample opportunity to refine your idea and to taste your idea. In, in in market to select the best ideas. Any product idea is a possible product which can be offered in any market. A product concept is an elaborated version of the idea expressed in terms of consumers and customers. Here I would like to mention that when we call product, it may be a manufactured product, tangible product, or even a service product. Take the example of financial sector, insurance sector. For each of the type of services, they call it as their product. So the product doesn't always mean that it should be a tangible product. It may be a service product too. Now, in this slide, I would like to explain the strategy of uh, any arbitrary food processing unit. Suppose you are running your own food processing unit. You have two options. Whether go for expensive range of products or inexpensive range of product. Again, you have two options. Whether that product is quick preparing food or slow preparing food. So, this gives different dimension of your thinking and it makes the two into two matrix where you can put all your product ideas. If it is inexpensive and uh, quick, you go for instant breakfast if it is inexpensive expensive and quick you go for cold cereals if it is inexpensive and slow you go for toast butter eggs like that so the options various options are with you now you decide which will be your ideal business condition. On the other hand, when you will go for the brand positioning and you are mapping your brand positioning for the, say, the uh, instant uh, breakfast 
out of these four instant breakfast and you may have various brands available in the market or even your own company may have various brands so you have to decide how to position your brand properly in the market what to project to your target customers whether on calories whether on price so that you have to decide so when you will go for brand positioning map preparing the brand positioning map you should divide your target segments market segments and you put a position of your entire product range consumer adoption process is an individual decision to become a regular user of a product and is followed by the consumer loyalty process new product marketers typically aim at early adopters and use the theory of innovation diffusion and consumer adoption to identify them there are five stages in the adoption process one awareness where the customer becomes aware of the innovation but lacks information about it second is interest the customer is stimulated to seek information about the innovation third evaluation where the customer considers whether to try the innovation fourth trial where the customer tries the innovation to improve his or her estimate of its value and fifth adoption the consumer decides to make full and regular use of the innovation it happens almost all cases of consumer products all cases of electronic products all cases of uh, white goods and there is various factors influencing this adoption process like uh, whether the innovators are technically enthusiastic whether the early adopters are uh, opinion leaders whether the early majority are uh, deli deliberate um, pragmatic view of the technology whether the late majority uh, are skeptical about the pro about the product uh, and whether they are laggards laggards are traditional bounds and resist the innovation until the status quo is no longer defensible i know many persons who opposed computers in uh, 80s to introduce in their office even there are many persons who do not use even my father he doesn't use a smartphone he is happy with his button phone even at, in present condition present days which we cannot even think and if you look at this uh, graph 
uh, it, it the adopted categorization on the basis of relative time of adoption of innovations you will see that it makes uh, like a bale so it, it's a normal curve it's a normal curve it is perfect bale shaped so if you if you apply this model in your business you will understand how many of your customers are <clears throat> early adopters early majority late majority or laggards so that view that entire no uh, picture will be clear uh, before you before you do something yes this is very important thing i many times i emphasized uh, to go for global marketing to go for global it's actually has become actually has become the policy of the government to go global with your product with your service whatever you have now uh, it is coming now you have to take some decisions before going into global market firstly decide whether to go abroad it's is it necessary if you are happy if you cater your local needs if you cater your domestic need if you cater your country's need because india is a large country with huge captive potential have you explored everything if not then explore first explore your uh, own locality explore your own uh, market explore the domestic market then you go for the uh, international market so you have to decide you have to take a decision whether it is necessary whether the nature of the business is like that you have a market in uh, international so you you take a decision now you have to decide which market to enter so that's also very important like the same decisions uh, you have to take if it is a domestic market we have discussed what market to enter the same decision you have to take if you go for global market so the second Uh, decision that you have to take which market to enter third comes how to enter the market what is the process what should be your strategy to enter the market fourth is to decide on the marketing program <clears throat> so it's a very complex process of developing a marketing program you have to design it you have to design your marketing program and you have to decide finally you have to decide on the marketing organization because it, it's not it's not it's beyond your uh, control as an individual or a small startup a small business it's quite impossible for you to manage an international market where the competition is much more tougher which you are facing now in your domestic uh, market condition so formatting form a structured organization solely for the purpose of <clears throat> solely for the purpose of international business then only you go for it also i would like to mention various risk and you have to give uh, you must uh, give uh, proper weightage to several risk factors 
which are you might not understand the foreign preference and could fail to offer a competitively attractive product make a note of it second you might not understand the foreign country's business culture third you might not underestimate foreign regulations you might underestimate foreign regulations and incur some unexpected cost in future you might lack managers with international experience the foreign country might change its commercial laws devalue its currency or undergo a political revolution and expropriate foreign property so these are the five major threats that you should be very much alert about these so one is the foreign preferences second is the, their culture third is the regulatory framework fourth is experienced manager to deal with the international business and fifth one is the foreign commercial laws some companies don't act until events thrust them into the international arena this international internationalization process typically has four aspects and four stages rather one is where there is no regular export activities two second is export via independent representatives who are called agents third is establishment of one or more sales subsidiaries and fourth one is establishment of production facilities abroad now we have to take a decision on this also so these are the five models <coughs> of entry into any foreign market you assess commitment risk your control and the profit potential these four aspects you do first then you decide whether you can go for any in direct exporting like you you act as a as a middleman and say the product is coming from uh, europe and you are sending it to say in bangladesh or the second level direct exporting third licensing fourth joint ventures and fifth the ultimate stage is direct investment so you are not in a position to go for the direct investment now because you don't have that capacity you don't have that size you don't have that scale but you can explore this initial stages of say indirect exporting direct exporting uh, licensing even the joint ventures so explore these but again there are some cautions for you you should have a, a international business department or division you should have overseas control and your 
uh, overseas sales representatives should be very intelligent to deal with any situation and you should be fully aware of the international laws the country's regulations where you are going to operate and everything before you uh, put your resource into the foreign uh, operations now i would like to suggest you some international product and communication strategies before going into this i would like to mention a few aspects of <clears throat> deciding on the marketing program which we have mentioned earlier you should understand properly the global similarities and differences of the products so whatever product or service you offer to uh, any foreign country you should assess how many global similarities similar products are available in that market and what are the points of differences you may there may be some common product there may be some products which are similar to your product but there may be differences in features so there should be a distinct analysis of this this five international product and communication strategies uh these are required steps because product adaptation alters the product to meet local conditions or preferences flexibility is important in such case and this flexible manufacturing makes it easier to do so on on several levels so you can produce a regional version of your product or service you can you can produce a country specific version of your product or service even you can produce a city specific uh, version of your product or service or even you can produce a different retailer version so whatever you produce whatever you uh, the strategy you decide on product adaptation that should have a clear communication strategy and the purpose of this communication strategy is to make them aware of what you want to produce now this whole channel concept of international marketing the whole channel concept is very uh, useful where you explore your seller seller's international marketing headquarters how strong it is the channels between the nations where you operate the channels within foreign nations and the final buyers so the entered chain of distribution network the channel you should have a clear idea of that you should assess the each and every 
part of this channel properly before you enter the market. So, there are two aspects. One is the country of origin where you are now and the country where you are doing business. These two are totally different. They are different culturally, their laws are different, their regulations are different, their uh, economic conditions are different, their social conditions are different, their culture is different. So there are various uh, dissimilarities which each of these things you should know properly. And finally, I would like to suggest you to follow these 10 commandments of global branding. Because it's the ultimate thing that you have to think. If you fail to brand your product, if you fail to position your brands properly, in the new market, new international market, then uh, it will not be very easy for you to penetrate in that market. This 10 governments give some guidelines to you. Number one guideline, <clears throat> understand the global branding landscape. The international market is really identical to or completely different from another in brand delivery. Second guideline, avoid any shortcuts in brand building. Build from the bottom up, creating awareness before brand image or the brand strategy and developing the right sources of brand equity, which is the tactics of your business. The third guideline is establish a marketing infrastructure. Build marketing infrastructure from scratch or adapt <coughs> to and modify existing infrastructure in other countries. The fourth guideline is embrace integrated marketing communications. Many forms of communications work in overseas markets, not just advertising. So explore all the ways, all the forms of marketing communication. Fifth guideline, establish brand partnerships. Most global brands carefully choose marketing partners that help improving distribution, profitability, and added value. Sixth, balance standardization and customization. Packaging and brand name can often be standardized while distribution channels and communications typically require greater customization. Seventh, balance global and local control. Companies must balance global and local control within the organization and distribute decision making between global and local managers. Eight, establish your operable guidelines. Brand definitions and guidelines let marketers everywhere know what to do and what not to do. The goal is to communicate and enforce the rules for positioning and marketing the brand. Ninth guideline is implement a global brand equity measurement system. Information from a global brand equity system lets marketers make the best short-term tactics and long-run strategy decisions in each of the markets. 
टेंथ इज लिवरेज ब्रांड एलिमेंट्स प्रॉपर डिजाइन एंड इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ ब्रांड नेम एंड ट्रेडमार्क्स आइडेंटिफायर्स कैन बी इन वेलेबल सोर्सेस ऑफ ब्रांड इक्विटी वर्ल्ड वाइड यू शुड टेक द हेल्प ऑफ आई पी एर टू प्रोटेक्ट यूर ब्रांड एवरी वैर यू गो एवरी वैर यू गो आई वु लाइक टू कंक्लूड दिस करेंट सिशन विथ दिस एंड नोट क्रिएटिविटी इन इट्स वेरियस फॉर्म्स has become the number one engine of the economic growth the creative class now comprises millions of members across the globe the creative professionals in financial services healthcare high tech pharmaceuticals media and entertainment act as agents of change producers of intangible assets and the creators of new value for their organizations creative and innovative designs are not only associated with uh, an iphone or a toyota car but are rapidly moving from posters to toasters to include processes systems and organizations so it's not about a very high tech product that we often think of uh, creativity may come may be applied may be implemented in any field in in, in even the small areas so that's all